Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, April 6, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and live via streaming worldwide through UNTV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVweb.com. I am William Theo. And here are the headlines. The Philippines records 414 new coronavirus disease cases today, bringing the total of confirmed cases to 3,660. Large quarantine facilities in the Philippines to begin accepting COVID-19 patients this week. President Rodrigo Duterte orders grant of special allowance to public health workers during the period of the enhanced community quarantine. The Philippine National Police to pull out cops aged 45 and above from their checkpoint duties due to COVID-19 risk. The government begins the implementation of the rapid pass system for frontliners. And the Philippines to mass produce sets of personal protective equipment coveralls starting next week to address the shortage of PPE in the country. There's no proof yet that the current trend in the coronavirus disease 2019 cases in the Philippines this past few days means a decreasing number of Filipinos getting infected with the virus. Aiko Miguel tells us why. On April 4, Saturday, 76 new COVID-19 cases in the country were recorded. On April 5, Sunday, there were 152 more confirmed cases. These numbers are lower compared to the figure on March 31 with 538 confirmed cases in just one day. But the DOH explains this is not yet proof of a decreasing number of positive cases in the Philippines. Kailangan lang po natin magantay ng kaunti pang panahon upang makita natin kapag stable na ang ating lab capacity, we can already see the true picture of the uh, rise in cases or decrease in the number of cases. Aside from the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM, there are nine other laboratories that are conducting COVID-19 testing on patients under investigation, persons under monitoring and individuals who belong to the high-risk group like senior citizens and healthcare workers. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, the real trend of COVID-19 in the Philippines will reflect in four to five days. As of now, it is still premature to declare that the COVID-19 curve in the country has reached its speak, the health chief adds. Based on a DOH report, more than 22,000 Filipinos have been tested for coronavirus. More than 16,000 or 82% of that number tested negative for the disease. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Bigger quarantine facilities in the country will be accepting COVID-19 patients starting this Wednesday. The IATF inspected the facilities that will augment hospitals' capacity to accommodate coronavirus patients earlier today. Dante Amento tells us why. The Ninoy Aquino Stadium, Philippine International Convention Center or PICC, World Trade Center and Rizal Coliseum will be used as COVID-19 quarantine facilities. Dito, actually, kompleto uh, na to. Yung basic amenities niya, andyan na yung kama, yung uh, side table, yung mga upuan, yung mga lighting uh, signals. Ito magiging operational by Wednesday. Magkakaroon lang ng mga final cleaning and disinfection. But the DOH clarifies Patients under investigation or PUI and persons under monitoring or PUM will not be accommodated in those facilities but only COVID positives. Meanwhile, the IATF is expected to finalize its decision this week whether to extend or lift the Luzon ECQ. I don't think ma decide mamaya. Siguro sa next meeting siguro sometime mga Wednesday or Friday pa. Kasi every other day kami nagmi-meeting eh, IATF. We defer to the wisdom of the IATF. This is not an individual decision. It is a collective uh, decision. So let's wait. Let's respect the IATF. 
Dan Tiamento UNTV News and Rescue Manila We serve the people We give glory to God The registration for Rapid Pass dedicated for frontliners and other authorized personnel kick off today. The Rapid Pass system is a mechanism initiated by the Interagency Task Force for the management of emerging infectious diseases to fast-track the passage of frontliners at checkpoints and to ease physical contact. Joan Nano tells us why. Frontliners, delivery truck drivers, and other authorized personnel may now apply for Rapid Pass through the website at www.rapidpass.ph. They just have to fill out a form and submit it and wait for validation. Once approved, an applicant will be given a secure and unique number to be presented at checkpoints. A QR code corresponding an application may be downloaded through the applicant's smartphone or printed and post it on the vehicle's dashboard. Pag-approve na po kayo sa sistema, a unique and secure QR code and control number will be granted to each authorized person or vehicle. No? Palala lang po, libre po ito at walang bayad po. Hindi rin namin binabenta ito. The IATF clarifies that rapid pass is not a requirement. Frontliners may pass through checkpoints by just presenting their IDs. In coordination with the Department of Science and Technology, the rapid pass system was created by Developers Connect Incorporated or DevCon, a non-governmental organization composed of Filipino developers and IT professionals. On its official Facebook page, Rapid Pass PH explains that there might be some delays in the approval of digital passes due to bulk of applications. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police or PNP headquarters will implement a 50-50 work scheme starting today, April 6. The police leadership will also pull out cops age 45 and above from their checkpoint duties. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Effective today, the Philippine National Police will implement the 50-50 workforce at the administrative office in Camp Crame due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 50% or the first batch of personnel will start their duty today, April 6 up to April 19, while the second batch will be on duty on April 20 up to May 3. The PNP will also pull out PNP personnel age 45 and above from their checkpoint duties. The Philippine National Police also formed the Admin Support to COVID-19 Task Force or ASTF to ensure the smooth deployment and speedy logistics of frontliners. Meanwhile, as of today, 19 police personnel have tested positive for coronavirus. Two of them have died, while more than 1,300 are considered as person under monitoring or PUM, and 280 are considered as patients under investigation or PUI. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The United States is entering what a senior official warned on Sunday would be the hardest week of the coronavirus crisis as the death toll mounted but saw some glimmer of hope from a slight slowing of fatalities in hard hit New York. Beverly Saison will tell us why. New York, the epicenter of the U.S. coronavirus outbreak, reported on Sunday that for the first time in a week, deaths had fallen slightly from the day before. But there were still nearly 600 new fatalities and more than 7,300 new cases in the state. Louisiana has become a hot spot for the virus, reporting a jump in deaths to nearly 500 and more than 13,000 cases. Places such as Pennsylvania, Colorado, and Washington, D.C. are also starting to see rising deaths. 
U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams said the coronavirus pandemic rivals some of the darkest moments in U.S. history, including the two worst foreign attacks on American soil, the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, and the September 11th terrorist hijackings. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said on Sunday that new hospitalizations had fallen by 50 percent over the previous 24 hours. He cautioned that it was not yet clear whether the crisis was reaching a plateau in the state, which has a total of 4,159 deaths and more than 122,000 cases, by far the most of any U.S. state. I hope we're somewhere near the apex, right? Or we're somewhere near the plateau. So I would hope that we don't need anywhere near that number of beds. That's the good news. The bad news is the number of beds doesn't really matter anymore. We have the beds, it's the ventilators, and then it's the staff. That's the problem. Nationally, cases the respiratory disease topped 336,000, while the death toll stood at 9,573, according to John Hopkins University. President Donald Trump said the country faced a great hour of grief, but expressed hope that deaths could be leveling off in New York. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel, and hopefully in the not-too-distant future, we'll be uh, very proud of the job we all did. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And now let's get the latest tally of the coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of 1,280,046 confirmed cases in 183 countries. The fast-spreading disease has also claimed 69,789 lives with 265,462 recovered patients across the world. The United States of America now has the most confirmed cases in the world with a total of 337,646 cases and 9,648 deaths. Spain, meanwhile, overtakes Italy on the number of confirmed cases with a total of 131,646 cases with 12,641 fatalities. As of April 6, 2020, Italy still has the highest death toll with 15,887 and 128,948 confirmed cases, followed by Germany with 100,132 cases, France with 93 3,780 and China with 82,665. Meanwhile, the Philippines records 414 new cases today, bringing the total of confirmed cases to 3,660. 11 new deaths were also recorded, bringing the total to 163. Up to date, there are now a total of 73 recovered patients in the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte has a grant of a President Rodrigo Duterte orders the grant of special risk allowance to frontline public health workers through an administrative order. Rosie Licos details why. The government recognizes the invaluable contribution of public health workers throughout the country amid the coronavirus pandemic. In line with this, President Rodrigo Duterte has issued Administrative Order No. 28 authorizing national government agencies, government-owned or controlled corporations and local government units to grant a one-time COVID-19 special risk allowance equivalent to a maximum of 25% of monthly basic salary to public health workers who have great exposure to health risk and physical hardships in the line of duty amid the COVID-19 battle. The special risk allowance will be granted to qualified public health workers providing services under the public health emergency, regular, contractual, casual or with part-time positions, under the contract of service or job order engagement, including barangay health workers assigned in hospitals and healthcare facilities. The grant of COVID-19 SRA shall be prorated based on the number of days that public health workers physically report for work during the ECQ period reckoned not earlier than March 17, 2020. However, 
Consultants and experts engage for a limited period to perform specific activities or services with expected outputs. Laborers engage through job contracts and paid on piecework basis. Student workers and apprentices and all individuals and group of individuals whose services are engaged through contract of service or job order but are not assigned in hospitals or medical facilities are excluded from the grant of SRA. The budget for the grant of SRA will be charged in available personal services allotment and available release maintenance and other operating expense allotments. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines will produce its own medical grade personal protective equipment for coronavirus frontliners. Meanwhile, some 3.6 million Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino program beneficiaries receive financial help under the government's social amelioration program. Rosa Nicos explains why. Amid the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, the private and public health sectors have agreed to develop medical-grade personal protective equipment or PPE through the members of the Confederation of Wearable Exporters of the Philippines or CONWEP. Raw materials for PPE sets will be shipped this week while the rollout of production of the government factories will immediately start next week. Once target is accomplished, frontline workers leading the fight against COVID-19 will have ample supply, especially in COVID-risk hospitals situations such as operating rooms, COVID-19 positive wards, and intensive care units. Once operational, these factories will be able to produce 10,000 PPEs per day. 10,000 PPEs Kada araw po. Meanwhile, the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD has already transferred the emergency cash subsidies of Pantawid Pamilya Filipino Program or Four Peace Beneficiaries through their cash cards. More than 3.6 million beneficiaries with cash cards nationwide were provided with a subsidy with a total budget allocation of 16.3 billion pesos. For four piece beneficiaries with no cash cards, they can claim their cash subsidy through the DSWD regional offices. So since kasama sila dun sa national database po natin ng mga four piece beneficiaries at nabigyan na po sila nung nung doon sa kanilang mga cash cards na, na download na po at na, na, na ipasok na po sa kanilang land bank accounts so nasa cash card na nila yung tulong natin hindi na po yun kasama doon sa dapat tulungan ng or bibigyan ng social amelioration card ng LGU Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue We serve the people, we give glory to God Meanwhile, the Labor Department requires a bigger budget in providing financial assistance to local workers affected by the coronavirus disease crisis. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. The Department of Health has been providing financial assistance to formal and informal workers from private sectors, implementing flexible work arrangements and temporary closure while the enhanced community quarantine is effective. Out of the 1.5 billion peso fund of Dole's program for affected workers, more than 600 million pesos has been disbursed to about 200 workers as of April 4. But based on the data from the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA, the number of affected workers may reach up to 1.8 million. According to Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III, they will have to ask additional budget from the national government so they could provide financial aid to those who are in need until the lockdown ends on April 14. But should the quarantine period get extended, Dole plans to recommend the extension of the cash assistance program and seek approval from the IATF on COVID-19. We will, the Department of Labor, will recommend for the extension of the program of cash assistance, uh, or we call it CAMP. We will recommend for now, at the end of the decision of the Interagency Task Force. Board. For inquiries on Dallas program, just contact the department through its hotline 1349. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
Cavite Governor John Vic Remulla is asking President Rodrigo Duterte to consider the middle class in the government social amelioration program. Arlene Delgado reports why. In an open letter posted on his Facebook account, Cavite Governor John Vic Remulla says 300,000 of Cavite's migrant residents work in Manila, while 400,000 are directly and indirectly working from the province's economic zones. According to Remulla, the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the province hard, and not everybody can fend for themselves. The governor notes that most of the middle class families are employed in the private sector or small and medium enterprises, and double income homes, including overseas Filipino workers, solo parents, transport operators, and entrepreneurs who rely on a monthly paycheck. Remulia explains the crisis has hit not only the poorest of the poor, but also those who have built much, but not enough. The palace has yet to respond to the letter. But in today's briefing of the Interagency Task Force, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles said that the priority in the giving of financial aid are the 18 million families in the informal sector who are really much in need in this time of crisis. Hindi na po namin isa sinama dun sa 18 million families yung mga may kaya. So yun lamang na nahirapan, yun lamang na sa informal sector, yung mga no work, no pay, mga kababayan natin na nangangailangan ng tulong ng gobyerno, sila yung dapat natin tulungan. Sila yung dapat hayaan natin matulungan ng gobyerno. Hindi po ito para sa mga may kaya na po. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A lawmaker urges the government to continue to provide family planning services and contraceptives to prevent high-risk pregnancy as the threat of COVID-19 continues. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Pregnancy is a period where a woman experiences changes in her body and immune system. According to the World Health Organization, due to these changes, a pregnant woman can be badly affected by some respiratory infections, including the coronavirus disease. That is why our by first district representative Ed Silagman is urging the government to continue to provide reproductive health supplies and services to the poor. The lawmaker adds that there is also a need for the government to make sure adequate supply of contraceptives in drug stores during the enhanced community quarantine period. The Commission on Population and Development, or POPCOM, has earlier advised of a possible increase in unplanned pregnancies due to the implementation of lockdowns and home quarantine due to COVID-19. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A patrol woman shares her story of being on the front line of the fight against the coronavirus disease that has stricken countries and regions around the world. Josefe Nestoso was tasked to implement peace and order in the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, but with this, she must sacrifice her other duty as a mother to her beloved daughter. Here's a story of a passionate mother and her love for her country. Various stories we hear from our frontliners. Each one has a certain emotional appeal to it, maybe because these stories were born out of fighting for us. Meet Josephine Nestroso from Davao City. She is a woman police, one of those tasked to implement the community quarantine. Duty calls is what we normally hear from our frontliners. But for patrol woman Josephine, her duty for the country is favored over her beloved daughter, whose wish is to be with her. Sa panahon ng COVID-19, ibang klase yung aming kinakaharap na kalaban. Kasi it could be anyone. Kasi hindi naman namin na-identify kung sino yung infected. At bilang isang police, masyado akong na-expose sa labas. Marami akong nakakasalimuhang tao. 
At hindi ko man sigurado na pag uwi ko ng bahay ay virus free ako. Kaya bilang isang ina, pinili ko muna ngayon na bumukod at hindi muna umuwi ng bahay kasi natatakot ako kasi baka ako pa yung magdala ng virus sa aking pamilya. Nakakalungkot man dahil hindi ko makikita ang aking anak pero konting sakripisyo lang kasi para din to sa ikabubuti namin lahat. We are blessed when we are asked to stay at home because Josephine in the front line does not have that luxury of staying home with her daughter. Josephine knows that the battle against COVID-19 is challenging and God's mercy is our only hope. Wala po kaming option na manatili sa bahay kasi ngayon po mas kailangan po kami ng gobyerno upang mapanatili ang kaayusan at siguradad ng mamamayan lalo pa ngayon at pinapatupad ang community quarantine. Through our prayers, all these fears shall go away and she will be together again with her family. Nakakatagal ako sa aking tungkulin dahil inspirasyon ko po ang aking anak na si Perzy, ang mga mahal ko sa buhay, at ang kapwa ko po frontliners, gaya ng mga nurses, doktor, mga kapwa ko pulis, mga janitors, at iba pang frontliners na kasama ko pong lumalaban upang uh, masugpo at hindi na lumaganap ang COVID-19. At iniisip ko, mo, ko po na everything will come to pass. May awa po ang Diyos. Pag natapos na po lahat ng ito, ay makakasama ko ng aking pamilya na hindi nangangamba. In these trying times, a glimpse of her daughter shall bring smile in her lips. Much more to hug her. But due to COVID-19, a real sweet hug is risky. For her protection, a hug gesture on air may do for the sweet moment. This is sweet yet misty. That time, yung rota namin is doon sa place ng ate ko. Kaya tumawag ako sa kanya, sabi ko, palabasin saglit si Percy kasi dadaan kami doon sa street nila. Uh, gusto ko lang makita yung bata kasi namimiss ko na. At nung pagdating namin doon, nakita ko may bitbit -bit siyang cellophane. Kaya bumaba na ako. Pero talagang pinipigilan ko yung sarili ko na hindi siya ihag, hindi siya hawakan kasi natatakot ako for her safety. Kaya sabi ko na ilagay na lang doon yung, yung cellophane kasi ayokong matouch siya. Sumod nang daman siya kahit, kahit gustong gusto ko na siyang yakapin. Pero kasi nga nag-aalala ako for their health, for their safety. Kaya nag-air hug na lang kami. The sacrifices of a police, the same sacrifices of a mother on duty. Something admirable and worth our sincere appreciation. The Philippine Port Authority appeals to all importers to continuously withdraw overstaying shipments from Manila cities to ports. Meanwhile, the, the importation and donations of personal protective equipment and other medical supplies are now tax and duty-free. Joan Nano tells us why. The Philippine Ports Authority or PPA reports that several importers and consignees begin to adhere with the government's call to address port congestion at the Manila International Container Port Terminal and Manila South Harbor. In fact, overstaying shipments at the two ports were reduced last week by about 30% according to the Philippine Ports Authority. But last weekend, new shipments arrived at the ports in Manila resulting to a 90% yard utilization. PPA General Manager Jason Chago worries that cargoes would again pile up at the ports because of the long holiday and the possible extension of the enhanced community quarantine period in Luzon. Kami muling nananawagan na sana tuloy-tuloy na natin yung momentum ng uh, pag-withdraw ng mga kargamento dahil nakikita natin ngayong linggong ito na pumasok ay uh, tinulimig natin magkakaroon na naman ng uh, pagkikilang trabaho 
simula PMS ano, hanggang linggo dahil tradisyon na yan. Meanwhile, importations and donations of personal protective equipment sets and other medical supplies for the COVID-19 battle will be tax and duty-free in accordance with the Bureau of Customs' most recent administrative order in line with the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. The aim of the CAO or CAO is to expedite customs clearance of tax and duty exempt importations of PPEs and medical goods which are urgently needed by the country's citizens, frontliners, and medical supplies manufacturers. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A Filipino-made gadget is seen to help health workers in monitoring COVID-19 patients. Around 1,000 units will soon be distributed to various health facilities in the country. Ray Pelayo explains why. The Department of Science and Technology delivered 106 units of biomedical devices called Rx Box to the Philippine General Hospital. U.S. Secretary Fortunato de la Peña says gadget will help health workers in monitoring COVID-19 patients. It is capable of measuring a patient's temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation, uterine contractions, and electrocardiogram or ECG reading. The RX box was developed by researchers from University of the Philippines, Manila, and Diliman campuses and supported by the DOST. Uh, yan ay uh, ikakabit sa mga pasyente ng, uh, ng COVID-19 at uh, imamonitor yan yung kanilang mga vital signs, i-stay sent by computers, analysis station. Around 1,000 units of the RX box will be distributed to different health facilities in the country. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, here's RL Camille live from Takatka, Takatka Japan. RL, good evening. Good evening, Diego. Singapore has told 20,000 foreign workers to stay in their dormitories for 14 days as coronavirus cases increase in the city-state. Annie Man Mancilla details why. Singapore's Ministry of Health, or MOH, reported 120 new COVID cases on Sunday, recording its highest daily jump in bringing the total confirmed cases in the city-state to 1,309, as officials urge citizens to adhere to strict new measures. Among the new cases, four are imported cases from overseas, while 116 are local cases who have no recent travel history abroad. Earlier in the day, authorities said that transmissions within Singapore's foreign worker dormitories had continued to rise, and the city-state was seeing more confirmed cases and ill workers. As a result, two dormitories have been isolated, one with 13,000 workers and 63 cases, and one with 6,800 workers and 28 cases. They are typically home to men from South Asia who work in construction. The workers will be paid and given three meals a day, but some have complained of overcrowded and dirty conditions. Because they are very stretched and they are very tired, very exhausted, some of them, and we, our hearts go out to them. Gan also said the Singapore Expo venue was being transferred into a community isolation facility for patients with mild symptoms. Although Singapore was praised for its proactive response to the virus, the number of locally transmitted cases is increasing, and a lockdown begins on Tuesday. Annie Mancilia, UNTV News and Rescue, Singapore. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A religious leader in Louisiana who was arrested last week for holding church services in defiance of a state ban on gatherings of more than 10 people reportedly held them again Sunday, with hundreds of parishioners tur turning out to his church near Baton Rouge. Justin Masakayan reports. The leader of the Life Tabernacle Church, Louisiana, defiantly held services on Sunday in violation of the state's stay-at-home order due to the coronavirus pandemic. Tony Spell, who was previously arrested for holding services, 
summoned his fateful once again, three weeks after Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards banned gatherings of 10 people or more. Hundreds of worshipers, about half black and half white, converged on the church, many arriving in 26 buses sent to pick them up. Everyone but immediate family members kept social distance of at least six feet, a lawyer for the pastor said. Every, everybody's fine. Uh, they would rather come to church and worship like free people than they have live like prisoners in their homes for 22 days now. Louisiana had 409 deaths and 12,496 confirmed cases as of Saturday night. Central Police arrested Spell on March 31st and charged him with six misdemeanors. One man who attended on Sunday said he embraced Spell's message of nothing to fear. I'm not scared of this virus. When it's my time, it's my time. Life goes on. But one neighbor of the church called it ridiculous to hold services during a pandemic. And I think it's utterly ridiculous that they're doing what they're doing. He's going against all the church. People ought to stop and think that if the president asks you to do something, you ought to do it. Justin Masakayan, UNTV News and Rescue USA. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A Detroit bus driver who complained in a viral video about a passenger coughing without covering her mouth has died of the coronavirus. Meanwhile, French police have launched a terrorism investigation after two people were killed and five wounded in a knife attack in southeast France. Kat Dumaraos details this report. In France. A man armed with a knife killed two people and wounded five more in the southeastern French town of romain sur isere on Saturday. The attacks took place in the morning outside a bakery where customers were queuing and at shops in the town center. The assailant, a Sudanese national who has been granted asylum in France, had been arrested. Interior Minister Christophe said security services would investigate the circumstances of the incident, working with the National Anti-Terrorism Prosecutor, who will decide whether or not to qualify the incident as a terrorist act. In the USA In late March, Jason Hargrove, a public bus driver in Detroit, posted a live Facebook video about a woman coughing on his bus several times without covering her mouth. This coronavirus shit for real. And we out here as public workers doing our job, trying to make an honest living to take care of our families. But for you to get on the bus and stand on the bus and cough several times without covering up your mouth, and you know that we in the middle of a pandemic, that lets, that, that, that lets me know that some folks don't care. Less than two weeks later, Hargrove died of coronavirus, Detroit's mayor announced in a press conference on Thursday. The president of the local transit union said that Hargrove had started feeling sick just a few days after he posted a video. The mayor pledged to extend additional safety protection measures to all public bus drivers, similar to ones already in place for the city's police officers and firefighters. Meanwhile, a tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York City has tested positive for the respiratory disease caused by the novel coronavirus. Nadia, the four-year-old female Malayan tiger that tested positive, had developed a dry cough but is expected to recover, the Wildlife Conservation Society, which manages the zoo, said in a statement. The positive test marked the first coronavirus case for a tiger anywhere and the first of an animal in the United States. Got the Maraos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the stories from around the globe. Back to you, Diego. RL Camilla reporting live from Dakatka, Japan. What's your haircut while in quarantine? 
We have collected several social media posts made by Nensens who have shared their own styles of cutting their hair in order to follow the home quarantine protocol. Mon Hoxon has the story. Sir. Barber shops and hair salons in Luzon are closed nowadays because of the enhanced community quarantine. This is why many Filipinos have varying approaches in cutting their hair short. Take as an example this boy who seems to have turned into a Shaolin monk. All he could do was cry after what his father did to his crowning glory. Placing your trust on someone is not that easy, especially if they don't know how to properly style your hairdo. Or else, this might happen to you. This guy, on the other hand, has his own style. He does not go to his workplace due to the work suspension. So it's quite fun, though he now looks silly. We feel sorry for this man. He could not do anything but follow what his wife was doing to him. This man was having a hard time cutting his bangs as he wanted. Several minutes passed but still he could not finish cutting his bangs. Don't just trust your friends when it comes to your hairstyle if you don't want this to happen to you. If there are those who are not fortunate enough to get a good haircut, there are some got luck by their side. Good thing, this guy's brother has a know-how in haircutting. This child is also lucky because his father knows how to groom and cut hair. Even a large pair of scissors will do as long as you cut your hair and stay hygienic. This married man just enjoyed his wife's talent in cutting his hair. Good job! Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Birthday wishes don't need to be for oneself all the time. A wish list may not even be that long. Just like in these trying times, if you are celebrating your birthday during the COVID-19 crisis, what would your wish be? For Brother Eli Soriano, his wish is a unique and compassionate one. Brian Evangelista has the story. On the 4th of April 1947, Catalina Soriano, wife of Triunfo Remando Soriano, gave birth to their seventh child, Brother Eli, in Pasay City. Brother Eli Soriano became renowned of his exceptional prowess in answering a wide array of questions through his segment Itanong Mo Kay Soriano, Biblia Ang Sasagot, in the longest-running religious program ang dating daan. Nating sa akin, uh, hindi yung hindi yung parang run of the mill hindi yung people some people just simply mouthing ano mouthing uh, phrases from from the bible no sa kanya makikita mo ta talagang ano aral no at may mga talaga may mga batayan yung mga sinasabi niya at sabi ko universal brother Ellis wisdom has captivated not only the heart of professor Maya but also the interest of a Filipino comedian, Isko Salvador, also known as Brad Pitt. Marami akong natutunan sa Biblia dahil sa kanya. Oo, oh, ayun, natutuwa ako dahil may mga hindi ko alam, may mga... Ah, yung, oh, nga, ano nga, no? Dati kasi nagpapasa akong Biblia, hindi ko maintindihan. Tapos, yun pala, pagka ano, ina-explain niya, ayun, naintindihan ko na. Over the years, Various local and international church leaders have challenged Brother Eli's biblical expertise. Interpretation niya, Por, porque Eli está falando con, con boca, boca, 30 minutos, 20 minutos, boca. Vamos a leer la Biblia! Despite all the commendations and applause he has received for his bravery in exposing religious anomalies, his humbleness and good conscience are always evident. As a matter of fact, he has expressed his deepest sympathy recently for the passing of a minister of another religious organization that defames his person. Eh, namatay na halimbawa eh, putuyain mo pa, dadagdagan mo pa ang sugat. Matuto tayong maawa sa kapwa. 
Kahit na tayo kalaban sa pananampalataya, utos ng Diyos sa atin, ibigin ninyo ang inyong kaaway. Idalangin ninyo ang sa inyo ay nagsisigusig. Ito'y panahon para dumalangin para sa lahat ng tao, pati para sa kaaway. Ah, ipanalangin natin, pati ang kanilang mga kamag-anak, mga mahal sa buhay, na huwag sana kung maaari ay huwag sanang magpatong-patong ang kanilang mga kadalamhatian. On his 73rd birthday, Brother Eli is grateful to the Almighty God for giving him enough strength to live. And predictably, his birthday wish is not for him, but for his fellow men. Ang hiling ko regalo, mga kapatid, ay yung iniisip yung gagawin yung mabuti para sa akin. Gabi, gawin nyo sa kapitbahay. Baka pwedeng bigyan nyo yung isang mahirap na kapitbahay na isang salub na bigas, isang latang army norte, o salubong kilong bigas. Maligaya po ako doon. Gawa natin ng mabuti, lalo na yung mga naapektuhan sa alot na ito. Brother Eli also appears in Kuya Daniel Razon's live program on his YouTube channel, KDR TV, from 10 p.m. onwards. Here, Brother Eli shares biblical insights, giving hope to viewers and intensifying their faith in God amid this global crisis we are facing. Brian Evangelista, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Katang Bahai, we are at a time when the country is under a state of health emergency. The cooperation of all Filipinos is imperative to avoid the deadly virus. We are calling on everyone to be calm. And most importantly, let us join together in prayer for our country and for the whole world to survive this crisis. You may join us in our daily UNTV community prayer at these hours as flashed on your screens. Those are the reasons behind the news. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening.